Hey, what's up guys? This is an exciting day. Today I'm gonna build a computer. This computer build is gonna be for gaming and for rendering. If you're a gamer and you're a streamer, you're running a lot of different programs. It's really hard to get everything to run efficiently. Uh, so we need a faster computer. Plus we want cutting edge gaming performance. A lot of people ask me, do you like AMD or do you like Intel? It turns out that Intel processors are performing a little better for rendering. So I really need these cores. So the i7-5820K, this has six cores and that's 12 threads. That's gonna be amazing for both gaming and for rendering. One of the things I wasn't too happy about was the X99 motherboard requires DDR4 memory. I wasn't too happy about upgrading to DDR4 because I have so much DDR3. I chose G-Skill. Uh, I've installed hundreds of gigabytes of rip jaws and I've never had a bad stick. Um, I've never tried the DDR4, so I'm gonna try it now. I got a deal on this from Newegg, uh, so it was cheaper. And I went with the uh, 2400 32 gigabyte rip jaw DDR4. This is the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 970, and it's got four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. So that's plenty of memory for all those edits and uh, high performance gaming. And I just got one. I think one's gonna be enough for me. Uh, you can, of course, put these in SLI. So cooling is a really important consideration uh, when you're gonna be a performance gamer. And like for me, my computers render 24 hours a day, 100% CPU. Hey, what's up guys? Synapse here. Check this out. This is my new computer build, and this is the computer that I'm using right now. Here, I'm putting in the power supply. This is an 850 watt power supply. The two components that take up the most power in the computer are typically the CPU and the GPU. So 850 watts is plenty for a one GPU, one CPU setup. If we were to add more GPUs and do like an SLI configuration, then we might consider getting a higher uh, power supply unit. The MSI motherboard did got great reviews. Uh, MSI is looking really good for the X99 boards and it looks cool. It looks like something out of Batman or something. You know, I'm trying the H100 water cooler here. Here I take the motherboard out and I add the fans. I'm gonna do a pool intake configuration and all that means is that I'm gonna pull air in instead of pushing air out. Some of the pro builds prefer a push intake configuration which means the fans are at the top, pushing air through the radiator into the case. That would be a push intake. I would definitely recommend getting a larger case. I tried the midsize for this build and I really prefer the full size cases. Now I'm gonna connect the motherboard. I'm gonna tighten those screws that are holding the motherboard in place. I'm just gonna go all the way around the board. I'm gonna tighten each one just a little bit, not all the way. And then after I go all the way around, I'll come around one more time and tighten them just a little bit more but of course I don't want to damage any of the threading and I certainly don't want to damage the motherboard so I'm not going to tighten them too much all right we don't need to use Hulk strength here there's multiple screws around the motherboard it's going to stay nice and snug so now uh, let's get inside the case and do a close-up to the CPU I'm going to install the CPU here I'm just going to take that little latch off of the CPU holder there's a little plastic insert that's in place to protect those very delicate pins and uh, you can see those pins right there it's really important that you do not install your processor incorrectly it's important that you not touch those pins that they're very very delicate and they make direct contact with the CPU so here I insert the CPU uh, typically the CPU will have a little indicator on it uh, that it only fits into that slot a certain way so you can look at the CPU, look at the slot, and see the little markers and the little grooves to see how the CPU fits in. It's really important that you don't damage your pins right here or you will be sending your motherboard back. Pretty straightforward to me how it fits in and I just kind of make sure that it's snug. When I handle the CPU, it makes a lot of sense to me to not make direct contact with any of the connectors there I kind of check that it's snug and also don't touch the very top of the CPU where the heat sink is going to go because you don't want oils from your skin because that stuff is going to mix with your thermal paste. Okay so here I'm just going to add a little bit of thermal paste onto the top of the CPU and I'm just kind of uh, you know sticking a little drop of it on there. I take out a blue stick because there's look like a little bit of the Thermal paste had dried, the little bit of thermal paste that was at the tip of the tube seemed a little drier 
than the rest of the thermal paste or at least it looked a little different so I took that piece off and so we just got fresh thermal paste on there and I think I used the Noctua thermal paste for this one and uh, installing the H100 onto the CPU I cleaned off the thermal paste that was installed onto the H100 I took off that built-in thermal paste so that I could use my own Noctua thermal paste I'm placing the heatsink element onto the CPU but of course you need to make sure that there's a very snug and close contact it's really important for all that heat coming off of the CPU to be effectively transferred to the water cooler. For this build, I wanted to try some water cooling because there's a lot of advantages to water. Uh, for one thing, water keeps your CPU nice and cool, especially for those overclocked builds. Uh, there's a lot more room that's left in your case uh, because you don't have to use a giant heat sink. The, all the heat is uh, dissipated on the radiator. And they also look cooler, I think, because you can see the motherboard. So here I'm gonna install the RAM. I got some rip jaws. Got 32 gigabytes of rip jaw. DDR4 memory. I'm gonna start placing those sticks in the slot. You'll see that the memory has a little groove in it. It only fits one way into those slots, so you can't really install it wrong. Uh, if it doesn't fit, then sometimes you just flip it around. It should just slip right in. Now the board itself supports more than 32 gigs, but here I got four times eight gigabytes, which is 32. Uh, I could get another 32 gigabyte kit for 64 gigs. Uh, but what I noticed is because the DDR4 is newer memory, it's more expensive. Most certainly has some advantages, and if you're going with X99 board, you're gonna have to upgrade to DDR4, so I'm sure we'll all be using DDR4 in the future anyway. I'm connecting the case now with the motherboard, so the case has a couple of things that you have to plug in. For example, the power button and the reset button. Uh, we're not gonna be able to turn the computer on unless we plug the case into that one pin. Here I get them plugged into the adapter first, and then the whole adapter just goes into the motherboard. Okay, so let's install the hard drives. By the way, something I didn't mention was I had to take one of the hard drive bays out because my graphics card is really large. Now we haven't installed the graphics card yet, but I wanted to mention it now because you'll notice that one of my drive bays, one of my hard drive bays is out and missing. So the case came with these little drive slides and those things slide right into the drive bay and you just have to snap your hard drive in but it looks like I'm having a hard time with this one slider but there I got it in and there's a couple of hard drives that are going to go into RAID I was a little bit upset that I had to take a drive bay out because I wanted to add more hard drives I want to add more RAID and I need lots of storage as an editor okay let's take a look at the graphics card the graphics card I got here is the Gigabyte 970. I like that three fan design because it's pushing a lot of air over that large heat sink and if one of the fans were to fail for some reason then you actually have a triple fan design to uh, make up for it. I was a little bit upset at how large it was. That's another reason to get a larger case. So there are smaller 970s out there uh, but this one is like the overclock version so I guess they wanted to extend the heat sink on it a little bit. Uh, so here I just place it into place and I'm going to lock it down so that it's nice and snug. Here I'm installing my Creative Sound Blaster Z sound card. Now a lot of people ask me, Synapse, why don't you just use the onboard sound? It's a good point because motherboards now come built in with surround sound and pretty nice sound hardware on board. The Sound Blaster does a lot of audio processing and it has a much higher power output. I don't really need so much that power output. I like that it's there, it's a very powerful card. But what I use it for is that dedicated sound processing. You get some really high audio sampling at 24 bit. So that's the kind of audio that I wanted for audio editing. And I really like that card. I've noticed a little bit of difference between motherboard sound. I don't know if it's drivers or audio hardware. So the Creative Sound Blasters kind of solves that variation between hardware and gives me the consistency I'm looking for between builds. So I'm gonna lock that down into place so we get that epic sound for audio editing and audio playback. So I'm gonna start connecting some of the other elements of the motherboard. Something to mention here that a lot of people are probably already noticing is wire management. I care about wire management to the point that it's not interfering with airflow, uh, but in terms of making your build look just perfect that's something i'm going to leave to the enthusiast and my biggest concern number one is is temperatures performance of course we're going to try to make it look the best possible 
so that we're proud of our work and proud of our build. All right, now it's time to connect all the power cables. This is a modular power supply, which means that I can actually unplug some of the power cables that I don't need and uh, only use the power cables that are needed. So modular power supplies are definitely the way to go if you are an enthusiast builder uh, because you don't want a bunch of extra power cables dangling around, interfering with airflow, collecting dust. Now I'm going to stand up the case, open up the backside. So here I'm just going to make a little plan about how I want to run these wires to power those components of the motherboard and the graphics card. That's another great thing about modular power supplies. You can customize your cables with a little more freedom. So I'm just going to run them uh, one by one through the back and uh, then we'll tie them up back there and make sure they're all in place. And uh, here's how it looks right here. And there was one thing that I was missing with this case was uh, the proper brackets for that SSD drive that to take out that uh, drive bay. So here it is guys. And I've been using this computer for a couple of months now and it works great. If you want to see it in action, come check out the live stream. All of the last YouTube videos that I've made, including this one, have been with this computer. And if you come to watch the live stream, this is the computer that I'm using. If you've never built a computer before, I hope that this video inspires you and shows you how easy it can be to build your own custom gaming and rendering rig. If you're already an advanced computer builder, then you probably have your own ideas and your own opinions about what the most epic rendering and gaming build looks like. So definitely let me know your opinions in the comments and uh, we can share knowledge with each other and push each other to the top. Good luck with your computer builds and have fun. You guys drive the content for this channel, so if you like this video and you learned something, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments.